Well, yeah, hello. You know, I'm always concerned about my visuals, but you know, there's not very many places I can really show you just this individual plant. I um, I wanted to talk to you about the uh, hydrogen peroxide and alcohol that I use in my sprays and explain to you why. But the reason why I'm trying to capture her in her entirety here is because I want you to see the difference in the time that I begin to talk to you, I work on her, and the time that we're done. Because this is my most reactive plant. It's called um, a corn silk plant or tree. And as you can see, she's seen, well, she has some parts of her that need to be, uh, well, cleaned up and trimmed up. And also, <laughs> when I was getting her out, to bring her out, I picked her up over the other foliage and right up into the ceiling fan. So I'm going to have to treat her anyway. Any cut anybody would have, you know, you usually go and put peroxide on it or alcohol to keep it sterile. It's pretty much the same for her, but we're going to do all of her. I'm going to show you how I mix uh, the water that I put in for the potting soil. And then I'm going to show you the mix that I use and give you the formula. And if you just want the formula, it's in the description below. The only thing I say is that sometimes I put the alcohol in there and sometimes I don't. I live in the south, close enough to the south to where I have to constantly empty out my dehumidifiers. Enough to where I hardly flush the toilet with any other water from March to probably Halloween. It's becoming the time of year where, you know, a lot of funguses and molds and stuff will set in. They just do. So that's when I go ahead and hit everything with the alcohol in it as well. You don't really need it all of the time. But this time that's what we're going to do. But I will give you all the formulas. Because the, the only thing that's different is when I don't add the alcohol. What I do have to say... Okay, this one is 91% alcohol. You want a real high percentage alcohol. I would use Everclear if it was uh, more affordable and more reasonable. Something that had a higher um, concept. The reason why is because whatever is put in there in its place is a filler, basically, and it'll leave behind some sort of residue, I believe, and so do a lot of other growers um, on the plant itself. You also want a pretty high ratio of the on hydrogen peroxide. I use this one. Does it have the percentage on there? Oh, that's never a good sign. <laughs> okay, this is a 3%. I believe that's good. Now, I had a case of the thrips. Really bad. It's been about two years now. I lost about 50 plants by that time and I had been working like crazy to try to do anything I could to save them. So I invested in Dr. Zyam it is right? Yeah, Eliminator. I believe it's a citrus base, but it I couldn't save my plants with it. So, you know, I kind of had to give up on some and I went to a barbecue and I talked to a grower. And he told me that he put in about this much, he said, <laughs> into every time that he feeds or um, gives water to his plant. Now, I'll show you what you need to do to put what you just took out back in, in an in a addition to the soil. This is Zeus juice. I have Recharge. I think Recharge has more of a nitrogen burst in it, and this is a... Yeah, I'm not a scientist or anything, but it seems to me it's kelp and uh, humic acid, but it has like a molasses and uh, I remember sea kelp. I wonder where the ingredients went for the whole thing. But anyway, it's all organic. Now I've said a few things to a few of you about, um, well, doubling up the solution as far as um, making the alcohol greater or the peroxide greater it's just going to cause you a, a backwards boomerang effect pretty much 
because the plants, it'll rip the, uh, well, I had some clones. I had put a little bit too much hydrogen peroxide in the water and all the way from the roots so halfway up their stem, which is just white and devoid of any life whatsoever. If you really think your plants need a double dose of something, just go ahead and mix it up twice then with the same lower, like I'm telling you, I put a tablespoon about, we're going to measure it today because I never measure it. I've got so many plants to do, I just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, I messed up the picture, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right then, anyway, let me mix up some of the solution and show you how I do this and then we'll see by the end of the video if you don't see a difference in this plant. Now she's going to look like she got a haircut anyway, so she's going to feel a little bit lighter, but she really does have a, a dramatic uh, response. Okay, I'm going to try and pour it in here and see if I can come up with some kind of idea of how much it is, but I'm telling you it's about a tablespoon I think, because I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I just like that. I don't know. Let's see if it works out to a tablespoon or not. I had to go find me one. I have to eyeball this stuff because I imagine you can only imagine how many plants I take care of at a time. And what do you know? It's almost exactly a tablespoon. So yeah. All right then. I don't know why I second guess myself. And then I put in about a half of a tablespoon of alcohol. Now it's in my best interest to filter my water. I don't pH this water, not, not for this. So yeah, I got a few of these I have to use because none of them have a gallon capacity in them. Yes, I really do this for every plant, but I don't treat them all the time. I just wanted to tell you real quickly, ever since I got back from that barbecue and I came home and I used this solution, the things reacted by morning and then they just increasingly got better every day. Some of the things I had were so far gone that they just couldn't find the strength within themselves to keep going even with being helped. And when I pulled them up out of the dirt, there wasn't much of a root system left and it was all encompassed in these thrips. I had all the stages of thrips. It looks like five different bugs. I'm trying to figure out which bugs those could be. But it was them and they haven't returned. I haven't had a problem with spider mites. I haven't had a problem with bud rot or mildew or anything else. Now I do go in my bloom room, especially from March until, oh yeah, I would say definitely Halloween. Every night with a bottle of spray of just peroxide and water. And I mist everything down just in case. And believe it or not, this water will dry up. I don't know how, it just does. Faster than actual water. <laughs> A lot of times I'll do this in my bathtub, but that's a turkey baster under there, like a, you cook a turkey in. I use it for my plants. I don't cook turkey very often because it's going to, watch, we want to soak the soil. What is that, my hair? You can treat the top part of the plant, but you're really not going to do anything that really matters if you don't treat the soil as well, because that's where they lay their eggs. They hang out in there. The only thing that I've had problems with for the last two years is fungus gnats. But I want you to see what happens with this plant. I swear by this. And anywhere in the world that you are, 
You can always pick up hydrogen peroxide or uh, alcohol. It's affordable. Alrighty, about a 16 ounce, oh, I think that's what it is. And I put about a teaspoon in there. Add about a teaspoon in here of alcohol. And I just fill it up with purified water at room temperature. And we're just gonna spray it down. And then, just to be sure, I sprayed the top of the soil in case any of it was dry. And you see I have it resting in it. I didn't do all this when I got home when I had the other problem. I just started treating everything and everything started to get better. I'm just trying to show you. I'm going to bring you in a little closer so you can see. So I'm just going to take a nice soft wash rag and wipe her off and let's see how much dirt she has on her because obviously she hasn't been cleaned since Christmas time because she had a Christmas bow on her. Well, I guess I don't have that much dust. That's good. But I'm going to do this to the whole plant and sometimes I put more spray on to make sure I get underneath every leaf. This is going to take me, I don't know how long, but I'm going to finish this plant up this way and then I'll come back. Okay. I saw a lot of damage. It's, it's, it's my fault. And I'm not going to want to take away more than I have to because it gets in the way of their photosynthesis. Um, but what we just did helps them um, because they're clean and they didn't really have much dust. It didn't really have much dust on it, I'm surprised. But um, it gets in the way of their photosynthesis. So I'm just gonna try here to that no okay now you can there and I feel more comfortable about it because I know that I just treated her so hopefully you know nothing uh, will come in so where see I'm gonna take this off too I just uh, pretty much do like that and we're gonna hope that we can help her. This has nothing to do with me putting her in the fan. This is just normal wear and tear on the plant. But it looks more attractive. And I think anytime that you have any kind of dead material around, you're asking for something to come in and eat it. Can you see that? I try to make them clean cuts without ripping and I try to leave them as much as I possibly can and it still holds its shape and looks pretty. See this is where she got torn up and I really, I, I just don't see you know, I'm not going to keep this leaf. I know I should, but I'm not going to. It's torn all the way up to here. Mm. 
more damage. Can you see that there? Yeah, I'm going to try to just thin this out here instead of taking the whole leaf off because I don't think it's necessary. that I think some of these spots are just where the plant isn't turned towards the light but I always try to stay as close to their leaf shape as possible can you see that so I cut that I cut this before a while ago maybe six months ago and I didn't have any problems with these cuts that I made Okay, this got beat up, but yeah, I don't want to, it's just a cut, it's not all the way through. And I'm just going to spray her down again, so anywhere that I cut on her will be protected. See, growing indoors is different than growing outside, and the funguses and things that we can get, and the little bugs, there's like, uh, well, about a hundred spiders per square foot outside and they take care of all that stuff on the outside and you don't have a lot of these mildew and stuff issues but if with a little bit of care precautionary care um, you can ward off a lot of that from happening uh, you know more can you see that You know, gosh, I'm really surprised because I thought she'd have more issues. But this is one of, if you're looking for an easy plant to care for, this is one of the first ones you should try because she just shows her appreciation for everything you give her. Um, I'm going to let her sit in this solution for, uh, I'll set the timer for 20 minutes and then we'll take a good look at her and see if she was able to uh, show any appreciation or, or uh Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude. So I'm going to spray her down again while she's sitting in here and make sure, you know, I got her stem and everything. And yeah, I do this with all my plants. I don't always have to cut them because not all of them have that trouble. That might be a little bit of underwatering on my part. I, you know, it's one or the other and I stopped overwatering. And so it goes to the other way. But at least she... Ooh. Oh, I thought I missed something here. No, I didn't. Well, kind of. Uh, yeah, I, know, I got an A personality like that. <laughs> so, yeah, let's just make sure we tidy her up because we won't be by to give her another haircut or anything for probably another year. 
I can't tell. I really can't tell. I think she looks beautiful. I'm trying so hard to get her. There you go. Maybe that's better. Yeah. See, I think she looks a lot better than she did. I'll be able to tell more when I edit this. But yeah, she looks really nice. She looks really healthy. And I think I might have a slight underwatering issue with her. But um, I'm just going to bring her out more. She was way in the back over there. That's where all my plants are back there in the, in the front room. So I might m move her more over to the side to where she's getting, still getting the good sun. But, well, she's more in my eyesight and I remember as I'm walking by. Because she only requires to be watered maybe every three weeks. It depends on how arid it is in my house. But I would say about that much. So I'm going to leave the um, equation for the solutions I use in my description. And the only thing that I do differently, like once a year, is put the alcohol in there. Other than that, it's just straight up hydrogen peroxide and water. I would just think that you would want to use that and try that first, the simpler solution, before you go out and buy poisons and everything else. It's not toxic. Well, anyway, I'll talk to you later. I just wanted to get this one out there. It's been a while since I did it, and I'll probably do it again. Oh, I don't know, maybe a year or two from now. Oh, no, seriously. I. Uh, they told me I had enough of a catalog on my channel that... Um, well, they just encouraged me to try and do experiment with doing different things, but this is the part of it that I live and breathe every day and I thought well until I do something different I'll just keep letting you know you know what I think it is that can help you in your garden so you guys have yourselves a lovely day and I will as well and I'll talk to you later bye